Hey y'all, Iron Eagle here. And in this little video I want to show you how to set up and use JDAMs or Joint Attack Joint Direct Attack Munition. I was a little bit distracted by these cool Apaches um, taking off in the background. So yeah, let's hop right in and I'm going to show you how to set up the JDAMs and how to align them, how to feed them with uh, INS uh, information for their targeting, for the targeting. And um, I'm going to show you my setup, how I utilize my keyboard in order to um, use it as my upfront control keypad. All right. Let's hop right in and get this thing started. So, here we are in uh, the cockpit of our lovely Hornet. First of all, let's do a little sweep around the cockpit because um, even if it is a hot start at one right now, you see something has been missing from the ejection seat and um, Let's go to the uh, where's it, the SH, SA page. There's there's the uh, uh, the SA page. So what I usually like to do is I start to align um, my bombs on the ground. So hold on, let, let's take a look over here. That's okay. So let's hit the menu button on the left DDI here. Go to stores, and we have J84s. Um, selected. So the J84 is a JDAM which has sort of a how do you want to call this? It's like a glide kit that is mounted around the Mark 84, which makes that a JDAM, a joint um, direct um, joint direct tech munition. So let's select this thing, and you can see that. The JDAM kit on this thing is um, starting to get aligned. So it needs alignment because there is an INS system that will be fed through the upfront control panel uh, in the Hornet with coordinates. So for today's little exercise, I will attack two warehouses on um, Siri Island. And the thing is, JDAMs are perfect when it comes down to static, not moving targets like houses, buildings, bunkers, stuff like that. They're not really great when it comes down to moving targets, of course, because we have no updated GPS information. So let's hop right into the JDAM display, into the mission, and we have the pre planned mode selected. There is TUO for target of opportunity. And we have pre-planned for uh, what we are going to use today. So let me show you real quick what I do to utilize my keypad, my numpad on um, on my keyboard to actually use this numpad here in the upfront control panel. Let's hop into my controls real quick, and let me show you. Here we go. So what I've done is I set up a modifier switch, which is joystick button. 26 in that case. Um, I am using a Frostmaster Warthog. Um, on my throttle, I have one button that says autopilot engage, disengage. I have no other use for that, so I'm going ahead and utilize this as my um, numpad switch. So, this in conjunction with all the other buttons on my um, numpad on the keyboard will make me um, will will make it possible to use the the upfront control panel uh, keypad and I am binding push button one push button three and push button four to slash asterisk and minus on my numcat numpad okay so that said now you know how the real magic is done. I'm going to hit my autopilot disengage button to be able to 
push all these cool buttons here. Okay, Raja. So next thing I'm gonna do is station eight is selected right now. I'm gonna go to TGT UFC, and what I want to do now is I want to dial in the position. I go to LAT, and my first target I want to attack is at north, 25 degrees, 55, 50, 54, here you go, 54 minutes, 11 seconds. And here's the tricky part. So we have 25 degrees, 54 minutes, and 11 uh, seconds, and now we need to hit enter and dial in the decimal seconds, which is 29. Okay, as we can see, 25 degrees, 54 minutes, 11 seconds, 29 seconds, uh, 29 decimal seconds. Okay, next thing you're gonna do is uh, enter the longitude, which is easting 54 uh, degrees, 32 minutes, 45, enter, and 94 decimal seconds. Here we go. Now I'm gonna hit target UC twice and hit elevation feet because I know at 16 feet that's my target and enter. So station 8 is set and ready to go. At least when it comes down to target information. What I will not cover in this little video is heading and glide angle and velocity. You know because you can specify whether you want the bomb to um, to fall into the target at a specific angle or uh, on a specific heading. All right, so I'm not going to cover that right now because right now I just want to show you how to set up a bomb, how to feed it with coordination uh, coordinates to um, actually drop them on a target. All right, let's switch over to station two. And we're gonna do the same process for a second target. Hit target UFC. Then we are going for the position, let, and um, we have a second target, which is, uh, let me check this twice real quick, Northing, 25, 54, 11, enter, longitude easting, and this is 54, 32, 45, 94. All right. Okay, the northing didn't, the northing didn't get in there. So let's do that one more time. North is 25, 54, 1, 1, and 29. Okay, now we get these coordinates. Always double check them twice, so you don't make a harsh mistake there. Am I gonna blow up some friendlies uh, or civilians? Holy crap! Um, let's put in the elevation feet again, which is 16 feet. That's good to go. And let's check the second target again. And check the coordinates twice. And as I can see, station eight and station 2 are the same. <laughs> okay, I made a mistake there. So let's go to station 8 and let's do that one more time. Let's set position, latitude, northing. 25, 54, 10, and 58 decimal seconds. And let's do the latitude, longitude. Longitude? Latitude. No. Lat. Here we go. North. That's true. Okay, let's... Oh my god. Let's clear this. Longitude. East. 54, 32, 45, and 18 decimal seconds. Now, that looks right. So let's check this twice. First target is at 25 degrees... 54 minutes, 11 seconds, 29 decimals. And easting, 50, 54, 32, 45, 
and 92 decimals. Right? That's true. So the second one is a 25, 40, 54, 10, and 58 decimals, and easting 54, 32 minutes, 45 seconds, and 18 seconds. Now we've got it right. So I hope that little confusion didn't throw you off the track, but it's pretty easy, straightforward. Just hit target you see, go into the position, lat for the northing position, long for the easting or westing position, and you just type them in. Just make sure it's always degrees, minutes, seconds, then enter, and then decimal seconds. All right? So this whole thing can be found on the F10 map as well. If you take a closer look at the top left corner, you see a certain different, or you just hit, uh, you click on a target or a spot, a unit that is working too so you can see um, this is at 25 and it's the wrong format right now we can cycle through this with alt z a my numcat which a numpad which should be on yours too alt z and i'm gonna cycle through this until i get the eight digit one which is this one for example, 25, 01, so we are northing, 25 degrees, one minute, 27 seconds, and 19 decimal seconds. So this is the format you're looking for, all right? So this is what the Hornet can be fed with, or in that case, the JDAM. All right, so let's roll this thing out and drop some JDAMs. Okay, first of all, let's fence in. Make sure lights are off. Okay, all lights are off. That's good, that's good. Okay, first off, let's return, select the JDAM, and set the E-fuse to instant. Now let's go back to the display and mission, so we can see our coordinates. And uh, the next thing is on the right DDI, I'm gonna click the center OSB here and go to my center OSB again and HSI. So the HSI, I'm going to select my first waypoint, of course, <laughs> and uh, select waypoint sequence. And um, I can box waypoint so I can see that little carrot up here. And that other carrot you already see up there is for our target, which is down there. All right. So let's take a closer look at the HSI here. And as you can see, there are two big circles and somewhat that looks like an angle or a piece of a cake or something like that. So that piece of a cake thing has to do, has to do with um, the heading and uh, especially with the heading of the setting, which is currently undefined, but which is way more important um, these two line uh, circles, the first line of the circle is telling you the maximum range, okay? This is the maximum range you can drop the bomb on. So let's zoom in there a little bit more and you see a dotted line which should become solid as soon as we start to enter that circle. The smaller circle is the minimum range. So everything in between these two circles is in range to drop the bomb. All right, so let's zoom out here a little. And as you can see, there's one thing we need to do. Let's go into air ground mode and set up the jet again. Let's go to the HSI mode here, as you can see. Let's steer the jet over to the side. The timer in the hut also tells us we are right about 10 seconds away from uh, the in-range queue. So once we, once the timer is down, 
we are in range now. So what we can do now is drop the JDAM and that's it. So let's drop one and you can see we are in range. Drop one, drop the second one, just bring the jet off to the side a little, turn the autopilot on, barometric altitude, and watch those JDIMs go in and hit their target. So, I really hope that helped you a little out and you get a better understanding of how to set up and uh, use JDEMs in uh, DCS World now. Hi, I'm Iron Eagle. I hope you uh, liked this video. If you did, just leave me a like and subscribe. And uh, if there's anything you want to know, just uh, write it down in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer them or try to find answers for that what you might gonna ask for. Okay, so see you all next time. Bye.